WordPress people. Welcome back to the WPMRR WordPress podcast. I'm Joe. And I'm Han. And I'm Chewy. And you're listening to the WordPress Business Podcast. We've got Han and Chewy on the podcast this week. Not only one of the great Star Wars characters, but two dynamic duo. What's going on this week, guys? Hanging out at Disneyland, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> In the Star Wars land. Yeah, there you go. I guess in this universe, that is where the Star Wars characters would hang out. Uh, If Joe Casabona is listening, he would say, oh yeah, you definitely got to go check that out. He's a big Star Wars and Disney kind of guy. So anyway, yeah, cool. So we got Han and Chewie uh, this week on the pod, also known as Justin Busa and Brent Jett. Am I, I, did I say your last names right? Did I get that okay? Yeah. Yeah, that worked. Nice. Nailed it. Uh, All right. Well, we've had uh, Robbie on the podcast before, part of the Beaver Builder team. Uh, And now we get to uh, be joined by a couple other of the guys on the Beaver Builder team. And we're big fans of Beaver Builder over at WP Buffs. I mean, what an incredibly friendly team. We just got on this call kind of before this and just offline before we started recording. I was like, I don't know if we've met before. And like immediately, like super friendly people, like Totally not surprised, but uh, yeah, why don't you guys maybe tag team, give a little intro to who you guys are and what you guys are doing over at Beaver Builder. Sure, I can take it away. Um, I'm Justin, and uh, I'm one of the co-founders and developers at Beaver Builder. I guess there's probably not a whole lot more to it than that, just running a lot of day-to-day stuff and then uh, jumping into code when I can. And uh, I'm Brent, and I'm the design lead. So that uh, pretty much means anything visual, anything that has to do with uh, the brand or the website. Uh, but also jumping into code and uh, planning and designing new products and things like that. Nice. So, so are you guys kind of like the tag team of like Brent's going to design it and then uh, Justin, you're going to build it. Is that kind of how it works or is it a little bit more kind of intricate than that? Uh, Well, Brent designs it and then we both build it. Um, Uh, He's uh, just as good at writing code as he is design. So spends a lot of time there too. Oh, cool. Brent's not a lot of people out there like you've got the dual uh, <laughs> the dual skill set. I feel like a lot of people are good designers, a lot of people are good devs, but to find someone who's both is a good find. So nice, Brent. Pretty cool. How, I mean, let's even dive into that a little bit more. How did you like uh, end up being proficient enough at both to be able to really contribute in each way? Because I find to, at least for me, like to really be able to get to a point where I'm able to contribute a lot to a project, I have to like practice a certain skill or get pretty good in one area. Like, you know, spend more time in that. So I spend less time in other areas. But it sounds like you found time with uh, uh, with Beaver Builder to kind of be good at both. How did that come to come to be? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've always kind of sat in the middle. I, I, I'd say I'm a translator. I, I speak developer. I speak designer. I can usually kind of <clears throat> pair the two up. But uh, yeah, my, uh, my background is design. My background is art and photography. Came out of school doing that, but picked up some web jobs along the way, picked up some computer science along the way. You know, once you kind of... Once you kind of start seeing those things kind of meeting up, it's it's not too hard to to sit in the middle and and uh, I've I, you know as a designer, I don't think I'd ever be happy doing something that wasn't really interactive. I, I really like interaction design, so um, it makes sense. It makes sense. I you know when you when you design something, you wanna you wanna see it work. So it kind of puts you in in the place of uh, sort of trying to implement as well. Yeah, for sure. I always found growing up that I. I always felt like I never really excelled in anything specifically. Like like I was never like the best in anything. I was always like pretty good at a bunch of stuff. And I always felt like growing up, that was a disadvantage. I was like, man, I'm like not good at any one thing. Like this kind of sucks. Cause I see a lot of other people like, Oh, they're so good at like that or this. And now I've, as I've gotten older, I've realized it's really nice to be kind of in the middle and pretty good at a lot of different stuff because it allows me to be able to connect all these different things. Um, And as the founder of a company, who is not specifically good at any good one single thing. It allows me to actually have the advantage of kind of understanding each piece of the business and and hopefully being able to help in a bunch of different areas as opposed to just be knowledgeable in one. Um, Cool. Um, And we also, you know, Beaver Builder is, you know, what, four years old now, something like that. Maybe a little older. Five. Yeah. Five. 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 Yeah. Cool. I mean, I'd love to hear the story a little bit more because I think we dived into a little bit when Robbie was on, but I'd love to hear the story about just how Beaver Builder came to be. I mean, anybody in the WordPress space has heard of Beaver Builder. It's At this point, it's kind of like when you say page builder, like the immediate thought that comes to people's head is Beaver Builder. It's kind of like, okay, they're almost synonymous. But in only five years to have like made it to the place of, uh, you know, of visibility or, you know, of, uh, I guess, 
brand awareness. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. You're very well known in the WordPress space after, after a pretty short time to have like kind of really dominated the, be dominating the WordPress space after that short time is pretty impressive. Uh, we'd love to hear more kind of about the start of, of Beaver Builder and how it, how it came to be. Sure. It's been a, it's been a while since I've been able to tell that story. So it should be kind of fun. Perfect. Um, Excellent. <laughs> Give you a fresh, yeah. fresh uh, attack at it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you say like five years, you know, a short amount of time, it feels like forever. And then it, and especially when you um, factor in that uh, we actually started the business that built Beaver Builder in 2010. So it feels like it's been a long time, but yeah, that's um, we, we started Fastline Media, which is the, the company uh, that runs Beaver Builder in 2010. And we we're just, you know, client services agency doing WordPress and design and custom plugin development and things like that. And uh, we had a few, I mean, you know, page builders, there was a visual composer was around back then. One of the ones that always kind of like that I saw that I always kind of think of as like, you know, one of the first ones that like kind of sparked my interest in this was uh, Alex King's company, crowd favorite at the time, uh, had built a tool called Carrington Build, which is like, Probably, I think it predates m- most stuff. It was, I mean, but a lot of people probably don't know about it. But it was, you know, it was like the back end kind of builder that and even then, when you say back end builder these days, people are like, what's a back end builder? Well, it's that kind of like blocky looking thing that's in WP admin. I'm, I'm sure you know, Joe. And so, Crowd Favorite had one of those, and I always thought visual design cool and word or tool and WordPress would be kind of cool. And, you know, there wasn't a whole lot out there at the time. And we had some clients that wanted visual building stuff. So, you know, we just kind of hacked together like Metabox solutions and things like that. And eventually just decided to kind of, you know, try our hand at, at creating something. There was another platform that we were on called SmugMug. Or we weren't on it, but we used to build photography websites on there. And uh, they came out with uh, their version two, which was a, a kind of a nice... Uh, drag and drop tool. I mean, pretty basic since they just focused on like photography sites. They weren't like trying to build the gamut of websites. Um, but I think we saw like, you know, some opportunities there when we're like, oh, hey, what they're doing over here is cool. So we started kind of taking some of that to WordPress and really just, you know, building a tool for ourselves. And then it just kind of snowballed from there once we productized it and moved forward with Beaver Builder. It wasn't even called Beaver Builder at first. It was called Fastline Page Builder. And then uh, nice. we got, yeah, we got some advice early on to, to have, you know, make an actual brand and, and do that whole thing, which is, you know, probably, probably helped us quite a bit at this point. Uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that's Definitely. a pretty, pretty simple origin story there. I mean, just, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, a, uh, it's simple. It's simple yet complex. I feel like I still have, I have the piece I wanted to dive into even more was like, did you feel like there was a, uh, moments where you like really like as a as a team kind of decided like we're gonna go in this direction. I think there are a lot of people listening who who do more services, maybe like a productized service like WP Buffs, or maybe they do custom dev or they're a developer, and to move into doing product full time or building a SaaS or whatever, you know, something a little more slightly more scalable business model than just doing client services is very interesting to people. Um, so I'd love to know if there was like, did you like have one meeting where you sat down and you were like, okay, like we're going to go for it. Um, that transition is, can be difficult, but is there a time where you felt like uh, you made that decision or was it kind of more of a slow roll? Uh, yeah, it was a slow roll. I mean, to be honest, uh, you know, just even in the beginning, it was more of just like a weekend project to like, hey, look what we can do. Um, let's, you know, try and figure something out here. But then eventually it did come down to like, if we're going to continue doing products or, or products and services together. And we decided just to focus on products, you know, once we got to a certain point, cause that's, you know, obviously kind of a scary transition to start offloading your clients and, and solely just get your revenue from a product, but slow roll. And then eventually we decided, all right, let's, let's make the leap. Yeah, that's always an interesting uh, leap into kind of like a more like a monthly recurring revenue sort of business model, more SaaS based business model. It's like you kind of have to get used to this fact that like people like pay you for something and then they kind of keep paying you until they churn. It's like, okay, so like now my metrics are all different. Like, how do I optimize this? It's not just like going and it's not the same as kind of one time one off business. You're really focusing on different metrics. So, yeah, always a interesting transition. Um, Brent, I'd love to hear kind of now we've like kind of talked about that transition. Were you doing design for kind of clients and uh, when, you know, Fastline Media before Beaver Builder, when you were working kind of doing directly custom dev for people and you had to transition into doing design for kind of the page builder and SaaS, what did that transition look like if that was the case? 
Yeah, I uh, so so I wasn't around from the beginning. Um, I was actually working for a digital marketing agency in Austin, and uh, as a designer. And you know, I always kind of treated page builders like this kind of weird inevitability, where it was like, I know they all suck because they all sucked at that time. This is like, let's see, when I started using Beaver Builder, it was like 2015, which is right around the time that they started offloading their clients and and whatever, and. Uh, you know, and so it was, it was kind of like I would do this every five, six months or so. I do kind of like circle the block of page builders and see like, all right, anybody not suck now? Because, you know, we had this, we were ramping up our clients. Uh, when I left there, we had, you know, 50, 60 clients or so, you know, and two designers that were like handling implementate like all the way from design through writing custom themes, you know, setting up the site, moving the content. And like we were handling, you know, a lot of work. 60 and, clients, uh, two designers slash devs. That uh, sounds like you had your, your plate full. Oh, it was awful. But yeah, we were doing it. And um, <laughs> we, uh, you know, and so I, we had gotten to that place where it's like, okay, well, you know, we've got a team of technical in terms of like, can do SEO, can do, can run ads and paid search, can, you know, like knows what to do, but isn't going to be a developer, right? So we have this funnel problem where we've got two guys who touch the code and anytime a client thing comes across, like we're, you know, and we're not building, you know, our sites aren't consistent. So one site, you know, there's a lever over here and another site, there's a knob over there. And, you know, it's just, there's too much, you know, there's too much complexity. Uh, and so for me, the Beaver Builder really was, you know, how do we get this thing so that not for us, it was never so that our clients could touch the site. It was always so that our team equally could deal with the sites, right? So the, you know, whoever picks up the phone talks to the client and the client just says, Hey, I, I, you know, I need you to update this thing. They could just go do it. Uh, and so that's where, that's when I uh, started using Beaver Builder in like maybe late 2014 or 2015. And uh, I did kind of have to, I got a few people on the team on board, a couple other people uh, had to be brought kicking and screaming a little bit because, you know, obviously we're battling the whole, uh, you know, perception that page builders were slow, perception that page builders were toys, perception that they were like Crayolas, perception, you know what I mean? Like all the all the nasty that had been created by, frankly, the first generation of page builders. And so, um, you know, but we made that transition. And um, then I ended up uh, joining the Slack community. And I don't know, I think I went from asking questions to answering questions pretty quickly. Um, was just hanging out there on a daily basis because it, it, it ended up being a little more interesting than the work I was doing. And um, <laughs> and so, I don't know, at some point I started hitting Justin up with ideas. I was pestering him. I had, you know, stuff that I wanted, you know, typical, obnoxious, you know, overachieving, hopefully, but, you know, kind of, I was that customer. I was the, I was <laughs> the, I wouldn't leave you alone customer. And then, um, I don't know, Justin might, Justin might have a different take on that, but um, <laughs> At, you know, at some point, uh, I think it was early 2016, I think it was January of 16, we, they were the, like, themer was still kind of like a glimmer in the eye sort of idea. And uh, Justin was like, hey, you want to you wanna come and do uh, some UX for this? And, you know, of course, I'm like, yeah, totally, I'll do some design. I figured it'd be like a three-week, you know, contract job, little, you know, little side paycheck here and do some design work. And then, you know, and... Um, the work just never stopped. So yeah, uh, I think it's been, I don't know, a couple, it's been about two years um, since I came on full-time almost. Yeah, and, it's getting there. Uh, yeah, yeah getting there. So cool. And this is not, uh, it's a very cool story that uh, you bring someone in who's kind of a user of uh, of Beaver Builder. We actually find Brent the same thing because we have Beaver Builder working on WPBuffs.com and we find that it's really easy for our marketer head of marketing, Kaylin, to, to work the site uh, a little easier than looking at the HTML and CSS. It's much easier if she wants to just create a quick landing page, like just use Beaver Builder. It allows us to move much more quickly. So I get where you, where you were coming from. But uh, but yeah, but what I wanted to talk about was that it's not just like, this is not a one-off thing. If I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, I believe that uh, some of the marketing support uh, at Beaver Builder and Anthony, was all he was also a user before coming on and helping out and actually working on Beaver Builder. So uh, is this like a, a method of recruitment, Justin, that you've kind of found, or is it just kind of happened to work out that way? Uh, a little bit of both. I mean, it, it has just kind of happened to work out that way. Like, I don't think we like intentionally said, you know, we're going to go 
to the community, but we also have, you know, kind of like realized over time that, you know, the community isn't a bad place to start uh, looking if we need. I mean, it's, it definitely helps um, when, you know, onboarding someone if they are like already uh, up to speed on Beaver Builder. And then especially That's from true. like a designer development perspective too, if, you know, they've already like, you know, built custom modules or something like that. Yeah, it's a good point. Um, yeah. And just the community in general is really, there are people, you know, there are a thousand different ways to market what you do and to try and get more visibility and to try and get more whatever traffic and new customers. The Beaver Builder community is just incredibly strong in the WordPress space. Uh, so strong that you're able to recruit talent from it to, to help actually build new products, but also to, you know, potentially help increase sales to get the word out there on new uh, on, on, on new additions, new features, new products, which we'll talk about a little bit later on here. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm in the like, Facebook group. And there's always something going on in there. So yeah, I'd love to hear it because we've talked about building community or like building an audience through community here on the podcast before. But uh, Beaver Builder has an especially strong one. I'd love to hear kind of a little bit more about like, was it, did it just kind of come to fruition that people started joining this Facebook group and it started happening? Was it just like you had created a good product that really had good fit so people were really into it did you like re- were you really intentional about like community building really like strategic about the certain ways you were building out community like maybe you just maybe you just got lucky like maybe it just happened i don't know i'd love to hear like what what that build of community really looked like as beaver builder kind of started to take the limelight in the wordpress space yeah sure um i mean partially it just kind of just happened but i mean i think that that was because of our involvement like we were heavily involved um we've always been like heavily involved in like you know providing like top-notch support like you know uh, if a lot of times people come to, to us with like questions for things and whatnot they're not like so, like directly related to beaver builder we're not we don't just like shoot them away right away and be like sorry i can't help you so i think that's part of it too is that we've always been like really welcoming of people and building relationships and things like that you know with our customers um i think it's gone a long way but i mean in terms of how it happened at least the facebook group anyways um was just one of our customers you know asked us hey can i start this facebook group and then that just kind of snowballed over time we did start to like add well we became more involved after a little while and we started to you know like add links here and there like join our community and whatnot um to really like promote that facebook community um But I think a lot of it did spearhead just from how like involved we tried to be with, with our customers, you know, not just putting out a product and saying, okay, figure it out, you know, contact us if you need something specific, really trying to like be there for our customers and whatnot. And I think that, that kind of seed kind of helped it grow into what it is today. Yeah. Very cool. I think that uh, it's so interesting hearing about how people are building like their online communities. And it feels like everyone I talk to does it slightly differently. Like there's so many paths to go from A to B and uh, yeah, but it's to me, the piece I pick out of that is kind of the, like you had a user ask to start the Facebook group. Like we started a Facebook group for our users and it, it's gone fine. But to have someone who's like, I want to create this Facebook group and like, let me do all the, this, this work. And like you guys, I want you to be involved. But to me, that signifies very much like there's, if one person has to do it, there are probably, you know, a lot of other people out there who would join, who would want to be involved. Um, so yeah, it's very cool. Question about Beaver Builder. Uh, so there's Beaver Builder, uh, which is the, the page builder. And then there's Beaver Theme. There's a theme that also comes with Beaver Builder. Can you like t- talk about, I've heard, I had a few, uh, my, some of my team have had a few questions about that. Maybe you could just like clarify what exactly or how those exactly work together. Yeah, I'm sure our naming uh, kind of makes it a little complicated, but there's <laughs> <laughs> there's the uh, the page builder, um, and then we have a, a traditional WordPress theme uh, companion thing theme that works really well with Beaver Builder. Although you don't need the theme, um, and then Themer Beaver Themer uh, is uh, another standalone plugin that brings a lot of uh, uh, building capabilities to Beaver Builder uh, beyond just the page layout. Um, so headers and footers, which are, you know, kind of basic elements, but then also like, you know, full site-wide templates, like, you know, you can build a template for just your posts, or your products or your pages or whatever. Um, and then it'll apply to all of them and, you know, it'll pick up uh, the uh, editor content and things like that. And it's got some other advanced uh features too that are kind of nice like data bindings Uh, we call them field connections so if you have like some custom fields uh, you can hook up you know you're heading to um, a custom field or the post title or whatever and then every post that has that theme or template will um, will pull in you know that for that specific post Um, so I mean what uh, kind of born out of two was like you know obviously full site building wanted you to be able to build like every piece of your site with the builder 
Um, but things too, like, you know, there's a lot of uh, agencies that have the workflow where they'll um, use a custom field plugin um, and just expose like certain things that the client can edit. So the client never actually has to go into the visual design tool. You know, they can edit some content. They can, you know, adjust some custom fields. Maybe you have a hero image um, that's hooked up to a custom field. So your client can just go into the back end, which, which is, you know, uh, for all intents and purposes is getting simpler, I guess, maybe, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> it's still not as much control as giving them the full page builder so they can go in and you know, change the hero image and maybe the headline and the sub headline or something. But, and it's, yeah, it's as basic as that. And then there's like some really fine grain rules too, like where you can say, I want this to only show for these type of users on this type of post type or whatever. Um, so you can get pretty complex with, with those kind of rule sets too. Yeah. Very cool. Brent, I want to get back to you in a second because I want to talk about more design-related stuff and I want to talk about your guys' new product that you have out that's kind of stemmed from Beaver Builder. But before we go there, I want to ask one more question. It's around Beaver Builder. Um, and it's actually kind of around competition for you guys in the WordPress community. Um, I talked with Robbie a little bit, very briefly about this WordCamp Europe, which you were at too, Justin. We must have been crossing ships in the night. But uh, yeah, you know, you never have enough time to see everyone you're, you're meant to see. But um, but I talked with Robbie there for a, for a few minutes there about this topic that I find very interesting because I don't think there are a lot of people in the WordPress space who have the kind of competition that you guys do in terms of being a pretty well-funded company. Um, I think there are a lot of agencies out there doing work here and there, but to be kind of up against uh, another page builder that has a lot of financial resources at their disposal, as opposed to kind of being a bootstrapped company like you guys, it's a monster to kind of probably have to fight against. But I'd just love to hear a little bit about kind of what that's been like um, for maybe people out there who haven't had the experience of like trying to go up against a big, really well-funded company. Yeah, it's interesting. You're right, because you don't see that is often in the WordPress space. Although I think in terms of like technology and like software companies in general, it's, you know, actually fairly common. Mm -hmm. um, so we've, what it's been like, um, you know, we've done some, uh, some coaching with some people that are a lot smarter than us, you know, and asking these questions and, and kind of try to figure out, you know, how to handle that. And I think a lot of it comes down to just staying true to your North Star and then what you're trying to achieve. Don't let yourself get distracted. Although you can't just turn a blind eye, but you kind of have to pick your path, you know, make sure that you're, you're staying, you're, you're going in the right direction. Um, can't, you know, cause if you get distracted, then you're just going to, you're not going to have any idea where you're going. And so we've been fortunate enough that Beaver Builders has been uh, successful um, as well too, that we've been able to kind of take our time on things and not just like rush, like, you know, like you said, you're going to talk about, um, you want to talk to Brent in a little bit here about assistant, like uh, we've been able to kind of flush out you know, the long-term vision for that and uh, where we're going there. Um, and then same with Beaver Builder too. Um, I think it's been ex equally interesting because there's also Gutenberg, right? So uh, in the page builder space, not only the customers are really rabid, right? You know, like I don't ever see people like, you know, uh, arguing about contact form plugins the way they do about hey, maybe contact form plugins. That might be a bad example, but you know what I mean? There's like different classes of plugins where oh, yeah. everyone's just like, oh, this is one I like, this is one I like. And that's like the end of the conversation. But then you, you know, ask people what their favorite page builder is. And there's, you know, like a couple hundred comments in the thread or, or something like that. So um, people are very rabid about their tools. Probably would be the same if you started like a discussion between Adam uh, as a code editor and something else. Maybe it's just like the tool you're in every day because you're in a page builder every day when you're building a website. It, it's, you know, so much. But, uh, you know, the competition aside, then you throw like the, the platform itself encroaching on the space. And that adds a whole different dynamic there too. But uh, yeah, I think, so both those kind of... Um, things that you have to think about as a business owner. We, we're you know, trying not to let it distract us um, and trying to still think about where we can uh, bring value to our core customer. Um, like we understand who our customer is. We understand that, you know, we're, we're, going, we're, we're focused on uh, creative professionals. You know, even though we have a lot of overlap with like DIY users, for example, and that some of our competition does really well in that space, we're not just rushing to jump and try and, um, you know, gobble up some customers in that space because then that's going to take away from you know, our, our core customer and that we're really good at focusing on is, is creative professionals. So um, yeah, just staying the course really, or, you know, trying to focus anyways. Yeah. yeah. I, I really like that answer a lot. Uh, yeah. Brent, you were going to say something. Go ahead. Well, I think too, you know, we have such a wide variety of customers. You're 
like when you have a community like that, you're going to have people that are feature chaser, chasers, you know, that want us to, to, to chase after every new feature that comes. And, you know, we've, we've all seen products that do that, that, you know, every time somebody comes out with something, they've got to come out with that too. But at the same time, you're going to have people who are really happy that you don't do that. Um, which puts you in an interesting situation because every time you come out with something new, you've got one guy that says, oh my gosh, this new feature is amazing. The other guy says, oh my gosh, it looks like this is getting bloated now. <laughs> and, you know, and so, you know, in some ways you can't win there, but, you know, you've got certain people that kind of see the value in, you know, what, if you want to call it lean, if you want to call it performant, if you want to call it, you know, a, there, there's kind of a, a, a value in the negative space of the product at not having every little bell and whistle. And so I think, you know, for us, really just trying to stick to our guns and say, what is it we're trying to accomplish here and not get sort of swept to and fro by whatever the loudest person wants that day. You know, I think that's pretty important. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with everything both y'all said. I think that a lot of people could take a lot of value from that. We have a lot of competitors in the kind of maintenance space and, and WordPress support space. And of course, we kind of want to look around and see what other people are doing and just kind of like have a good lay of the land. But I'm very much of the mindset that we have control over our own destiny. It's not going to be someone else who starts dominating and then we just fall off the map because someone else started. It's We have our destiny under control. And if we can serve the customers that we're aiming for well and continue to serve them well in the future, we'll be fine. I think it's probably similar with Beaver Builder. I think you're, you're totally right. Like Justin, what you said about like, what's your North Star? Uh, like, who are the people you're trying to deliver value for? Let's deliver value for them. You have this great community, uh, which you can take advantage of and which is an advantage you all, you all have created. And so, yeah, I think uh, I think there's a lot a lot there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go back to this episode after it publishes so I can go back and listen to what you got, what both y'all just said so I can I can remind myself. Cool. Let's hop into assistant stuff. So you went from agency that builds kind of custom dev stuff. You moved into product and you moved into Beaver Builder. Now you're doing a page builder and you do have a, this theme that, that comes with the with Beaver Builder, the page builder to really give you a robust uh, way to build kind of a custom website without really having to do much custom coding. Uh, and now you guys are kind of moving into a second product. I don't know if it's a second, it's another product, um, but assistant. I'd love to hear maybe a little bit, Brent, from you first, because uh, the first time I learned about assistant, I don't know if it was on your blog or what, but I remember seeing the logo for for it and being like, I know that's Beaver Builder. It's not like super obvious at first glance, but like someone in the WordPress space knows it because there's, there's some fun stuff in the little logo. But I'd love to hear a little bit about, about the design first and how that kind of got started. Uh, the design of the brand or the like the product itself? Yeah, let's just like go for all of it. I, I asked a very vague question, so thank you for clarifying. Fair, that's, that's yeah, okay, design... <laughs> And to be to be totally fair, assistant has some very vague areas. Um, we, you know, even for us, still. that's how most products start out. You know, yeah. Well, and and I think it's I think it's fair to say that you know back when uh, Justin and the guys were putting Beaver Builder get together, it was kind of obvious what they were trying to do. It was kind of you know not in a bad way, but I mean like the you know it was it was clear, right? And even to a certain extent. Uh, themer was kind of clear, right? We want to bring Beaver Builder out of the single page and into the the broader uh, the broader website. We got to a place where you know the next product is not clear, right? It, it, we had we have lots of ideas, right? We have lots of things we want to do, and I think if you if you were able to kind of see our I don't know collective brains among us, there is a north star down way down the road. There is something that we're trying to get to, and so it's not totally clear how these two products sort of, you know, are going to, are going to pair with each other. But if you could see down the road, you, you'd see, but yeah, assistant came from a kind of a, a space where obviously, you know, we are seeing some fragmentation uh, with how people are building pages, right? You, you might be building in Beaver Builder or you might be building in Gutenberg and you might have a site where both of those coexist, right? You might be blogging in Gutenberg and building, building landing pages in Beaver Builder and, um, you know, or you might have a site where maybe, you know, maybe you haven't discovered Beaver Builder. And so, you know, to put all of our eggs in that one basket is kind of, you know, that hin that kind of um, uh, restrains some of the things that we want to do. And we, we, we want to work on, obviously, we care deeply about the front end. We think the front end is kind of the fun place to be on your website. We don't really, you know, the, the WordPress admin is great, but, you know, the front end space is kind of visual, the creative, the, you know, it's your canvas, right? So we want to kind of bring more over it. 
what we said in the outset was, okay, we're not trying to, we don't want to just bring the admin over, right? We're not trying to say like, let's make an admin on the front end. Mm-hmm. That really wasn't the goal. But if we wanted to explore a new experience, we're going to have to bring some of the admin over because that's the stuff that you're dealing with. So Assistant kind of was born out of this idea of like, well, how can we create a space, uh, a UI space for us to try a lot of different ideas, to be able to prototype some things quickly, to be able to create, you know, every time we think, well, I, you know, I could do this and it's kind of a companion to Beaver Builder. Like I want to be able to get that off the ground really fast, but also just kind of, you know, day-to-day stuff. How can I navigate around the site, even if, uh, you know, even if let's say I'm working on a theme and my nav menu doesn't have everything in it yet, how do I get around, right? I have to jump back to the admin and go find stuff. And there's some stuff that's in WordPress that's actually kind of hard to find if you don't have your theme set up exactly right, you know, trying to think, you know, if I'm working on a theme and I need to go test that the attachment page looks good. Okay. And, and I just for the life of me can't find a way to get there, you know, things like that. Um, so there's some some corners of the WordPress space that, that are sometimes hard to get to. So navigating, you know, pulling up references, you know, sometimes you need to embed a link or you need to, uh, you know, grab a URL to something and you're just like, I just, I just want to pull it up. I don't need to like, you know, go through four or five clicks in the admin to try and go find this thing. I just want to pull it up. So yeah, we, we, we burned through a whole bunch of different ideas and, and kind of where we uh, sort of settled is can we create a front-end product that allows us to, to do practically anything. And we sort of settled on the app metaphor. And it's very, you know, very much parallel to uh, apps on your phone, right? The idea, each, each app is topical. It deals with something. It deals with some idea, some, you know, broad concept. Um, and so an app might, you know, it might expose your media library, for example, or it might expose, uh, you know, some things you were working on recently, right? And so, Really, the, the kind of fundamental idea is, is there a way for a plugin product to be useful to you out of the box? Whether you're starting a vanilla WordPress site and you haven't done any content at all yet, or whether you're coming into a site, you know, we work with a lot of people that have to go into sites and they're, they're auditing them because, you know, the site has some kind of, you know, dumpster fire going on and they have to go in and tell, you know, figure out for their client, like, what, what does it look like? What's the deal? Is there, you know, is there a tool that they can install one thing and it immediately is useful in figuring out what's going on on that site? Uh, and so Assistant is hopefully going to answer uh, those things. It's still kind of becoming, uh, but that's sort of the foundation layer for Assistant is meant to be a companion, whether you're just using vanilla WordPress or whether you're using Beaver Builder or whatever. Yeah, I, I think the uh, parallel you drew to kind of like an app is really interesting because that's the first thing I thought of when I'm when I'm on the, the site, which is just assistant for wp.com. Uh, it just has the uh, it has this kind of it almost looks like a little phone that comes up like on the front of your WordPress site. That's kind of like this little, nice little app. Um, you know, you can see all sorts of different diagnostic information about the site, and not just diagnostic, but like helpful information. You can uh, you know do a, a few different things just from the front end. I think that's. I've been, as I'm sure I'm not the only one, the, the thought that WordPress, the back end of the dashboard of WordPress is very difficult. It's difficult to navigate. It's difficult to find what you need, especially with different themes. Everything's in a different place. It's uh, for someone who's an experienced WordPress person like myself, I can find my way. I can figure out stuff pretty quickly and, and fast now that I know the tricks to it. But if you're a beginner, you know, this shit's hard. It's not easy to find this stuff. You could take hours to find this one simple, how do I change this little social but- button, you know? If you have something from the front end that you didn't even have to go into the dashboard, but you could do make simple changes from the front end that don't require back end access. That's, uh, that's an interesting proposition. Um, yeah, what it says here on the site is, Assistant is a free plugin from the team that brought you Beaver Builder to help you accomplish common tasks quickly in WordPress without leaving the front end. Um, yeah, I think that's a really nice way to think about it. Um, I'm gonna have to install this on... Uh, uh, on on uh, WP Buffs or, or WPMRR to check it out and see how it works. I haven't yet, but on my to do list now. 
It's a free plugin, question mark, for now, I guess, free plugin. Is there any thought, maybe, I guess, Justin or Brent, either of you guys, but is there any thought about what this might look like as a premium offering? Um, you know, at the end of the day, you want to try and probably build something that people will pay for. Of course, I understand that wants to, to offer it free to get users, to get feedback, to make it better, to improve, and then potentially offering this kind of a next level uh, version. Is that in your mind now as a potential next step in the future? Or are you kind of just like waiting it out now and seeing what happens? Sure. Um, yeah, no, I mean, there's not necessarily that we're just like, okay, well, here's a, here's a free version. Here's a paid version. It's not that black and white. And I think that's where we're at right now. And that's the, you know, the question you asked is, you know, is, is there a paid version? And I think the answer to that is assistant is going to allow us like right now you see what you see now and, and, and what's going to help help you with WordPress like Brent just explained, long-term, we want it to be a space for us to build more tools for creative professionals that aren't just involved with page building. Because that's, you know, the space we've been in and those are a lot of the problems we've seen. But to be honest, not all, not all the tools that solve those problems belong like in a page builder or maybe even in WordPress themselves. Um, so that's where, you know, if you can kind of squint and look long-term, we're going to have, um, you know, some remote services and things like that that will tie in to assistant, you know, it's, I could sit here and, and kind of throw out some ideas, but you know, then I, then I'll just kind of ramble on and, and probably <laughs> not make a lot of sense. But uh, you know, there's, there, there are problems we can solve um, outside of WordPress and we can bring that we can bring back into WordPress. Um, and we're going to try and do that through assistant um, because like Brent said, you know, right now we're building an app, an app layer or a foundation that allows us to build new apps so, um, you know, in the free pro- product and what you're seeing right now in the, in the birth of this is just stuff that relates to WordPress as WordPress is, you know, just kind of WordPress core. But, you know, the really exciting stuff, and, you know, I've had to be patient. I'm really impatient. I'm like, I want to just get it all done now. And we got all the ideas and we've had a million conversations, but um, we have to start with this foundation layer. And then um, down the line, um, once we, that's kind of... Um, uh, you know, more solid and, and we figured out, then we can start to really do some of these cool ideas that are solving problems for, um, you know, creatives and, and things like that, that are beyond the page. And I think that'll posi- position us well, you know, going through to the future too, because it puts us adjacent, not, you know, not only to our competition, but to WordPress and Gutenberg itself too. So, you know, when you're just solving one specific problem, which is building the page right now, we want to start to look at, uh, how we can solve uh, problems beyond beyond the page. Not that we're going to stop solving page building problems. It's just that we're trying to kind of expand uh, what we're looking at. Yeah. I mean, and I love how humble you are too. Oh, we entered this contest, this plugin contest. We built this plugin and I'm looking at blog posts says you guys won the contest. So I just have to make sure <laughs> listeners know that the plugin took first place in the contest. So we built it for a contest and took the gold medal. I'd love to start wrapping up here, but like I want to talk about like what gives you guys so much confidence to continue to build pretty like new products that may stem from old products, but to move into new areas that are somewhat unknown. Uh, I've talked to some people who kind of, they say like to rebuild an app. Um, I think I talked with uh, Kevin over at Ninja Forms about this and they they did like an app uh, rebuild. And he said uh, a lot of what they traded in, they traded in known issues for unknown issues which to me was a very interesting concept because I never really thought about it that way. But it's like, yeah, if you rebuild your whole app, you may be able to get rid of some of the old problems, but now you have new unknown problems when before you may have had problems, but they were known problems, which is a, it's an interesting kind of uh, thought process there. But it's a similar situation when you're kind of moving into something new. Um, so I'd love to know like what, what makes you guys say like, let's push the go button. Um, this is a new thing. We're kind of un- in unknown territory at some point, but uh, we're confident this will be successful. What kind of like leads you to be able to, to actually take those steps? I'll take a stab at that. I don't know. I think there are certainly, you know, there are certainly new things we're going to run into issues we haven't seen before. We, part of this, I think from a technical perspective, uh, Assistant is built in uh, React, Redux. It's a, it's very much a JavaScript, you know, client side application. And that's a space we really like, um, which is kind of, I don't know. I, I think we were maybe flowing in the, opposite direction some people in the WordPress community, the, the choice of going with, um, you know, some of these technologies for Gutenberg and kind of the future of maybe where some of the WordPress core stuff is going. Once you use it, like it's a technology that you're like, oh my gosh, I want to use this everywhere. Like I want to work this way. And, and it is solving, like it's going to introduce new problems. Sure, we're, we're learning, you know, we've learned a lot since we started using, using React and, and some other stuff in our, in our workflow. 
but it also, it eliminates a ton of things too. And so I think, you know, some of this is like, we enjoy building products. We enjoy kind of creating and exploring and whatnot. And, and we have some platform tools that weren't available when Beaver Builder was created and, and kind of inspired you to, to be like, okay, well, you know, it, this got easier. So let's, what, what else can we do? The other part, I think, um, you know, it's a different product. It's coming at it from a different angle. But for us, you know, we're just kind of, we're orbiting around these issues that people go through when they're creating websites. And I think that's something that collectively our team is really passionate about. We, we've all spent time building websites. We've all spent, spent time, you know, dealing with design and dealing with uh, how does the data meet the design, right? And, and ultimately that results in a, in a website or you could even, you know, you could say that results in an app or you could, you know, there's all these different things that are really very similar expressions of the same problem. So yeah, it, it, it's, it's tricky to kind of package these things up in a product and say, okay, that's a thing. But when you kind of, you know, step back and look at it, it's, it's all sort of orbiting around this idea of just, you know, how can we help people create for the web? So I think when you look at it that way, it just simplifies it down. It's not, it's not really that kind of um, profound of a thought to me. It's, it's like, that's, well, that's what we do. You know, that's what we want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I uh, I dig it. It's uh, it's hard to be able to jump into new areas, but uh, I mean, I feel like I've heard from both of you. Like, it's really about your passion for creating experience for your users. That is kind of your style and the way you think things should be done. And that kind of guiding light is important aspect to, and maybe and arguably one of the most important pieces to remember of how you're building a company, how you're building a business, how you're building something that people want is like, you got to stick to your guns on that kind of stuff. Um, so cool guys, it has been super awesome jumping on with you too. I feel like I've met many other people on the Beaver Builder team already. This is my first time meeting you guys. You guys are already uh, uh, as awesome as, as everybody says you are. So I uh, appreciate Thanks. you guys hopping on. Uh, I would love to uh, wrap up and maybe tell people where they can find you online, social media, websites, all that stuff. Oh yeah. Sorry. We need to tell you where you can find us online. Uh, yeah. At <laughs> Beaver Builder on Twitter. Or is it at WP Beaver Builder? No, I think it's at Beaver Builder on Twitter. Yeah. Sorry. I'm you not know, just in the code. I don't do social media. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. At Beaver Builder on Twitter. Um, and then we have our Facebook group, Beaver Builders, I believe the S and we also have a Slack community, um, which is Beaver Builders as well. And the website, wpbeaverbuilder.com. You can find pretty much all of it there. Yeah. Yep, wpbeaverbuilder.com. Uh, there's a little sidebar here. If you go to like any blog post that has the join our community area, it's got the Facebook link, Slack link, Twitter link, community forums link, uh, all that stuff. You can also find it on the Beaver Builder website. Uh, cool. Last thing I always ask, usually I have one guest, so today I have two. So you guys can choose who wants to do this. But I always have a guest ask our listeners for uh, a little five-star iTunes review. So if one of you wouldn't mind stop it, stepping in and asking our, our listeners, I'd appreciate that. Joe is a super nice guy. So I would say he <laughs> definitely deserves a five-star iTunes review. Yes, nailed it. So nice. God, I'm so nice. Appreciate that, Justin. Uh, and when y'all are leaving your review uh, on iTunes. Make sure you comment about what episode you were listening to. Oh, man, Justin and Brent were so cool. Beaver Builder so awesome. This assistant thing's sick. Like, that should definitely be in the comment uh, so we can forward it to them and make them smile. Uh, cool. If you ever have any questions for the show, feel free to ping us, uh, yo at wpmrr.com. Uh, if you're a new listener, feel free to go back through some old episodes and do some binging. We have uh, tons of hours of podcasts. And so not everything's, I always say this, like not everything is going to be relevant to you right now. At certain points of your journey through WordPress, you'll have certain things that are more appropriate. But if you go back through the whole log, you'll probably find four or five episodes. You're like, man, like I need to go listen to this episode by from Brad Tunar of Delicious Brains to talk because he talks all about pricing. Like I need to, you know, there's all sorts of different specific things. So go back through, go find a few episodes you'll like it and give them a listen. Yeah, WPMRR.com. Uh, if you're an agency or a freelancer and you are interested in, in focusing on monthly recurring revenue, a little bit like the Beaver Builder guys are doing, and you uh, are interested in selling some care plans or doing some ongoing maintenance for clients as opposed to just one-time projects and building websites, feel free to check out the video course, WPMRR.com. Maybe when this podcast comes out, we'll still be doing our big 75% off discount. I don't know. Hopefully, now that I said it, I kind of, I guess I got to extend that now. <laughs> so we're probably... We'll be still doing it here but if you if 
or not, just email me at yowpmr.com. I'll hook you up. Cool. That is it for this week. We will uh, be back next Tuesday. Justin, Brent, thank you guys for hopping on. It's been real. Thanks, Joe. It was fun.